Welcome back to Fables Den. This is Kim. In this video, I want to tell you some of the tips and strategies or things that you can do to make studying court cards easier and to really nail these royals from the Tarot Kingdom because they're really hard to understand. Starting with number one, I will say this for any kind of learning, any kind of studying. Number one is I want you to know that you are in control of your learning, right? If uh, a book doesn't really speak to you, if the keywords aren't coming together, if something, some kind of method, some kind of course, even my course, if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. It's all feedback, right? It's, it's telling you what's not suitable and it's telling you maybe what else do you need to research and maybe what some of the things that you need to tweak or stuff like that. So I just want you to know that you're in control of your learning. You get to decide um, what you agree with, maybe what you need more research on or more need more clarity on. You get to decide what really works with your tarot practice. You get to decide what really speaks to you, what language speaks to you, and what kind of style of teaching is best for you. So you get to decide. And maybe sometimes it doesn't give you the feedback that you want, you know, maybe it doesn't give you the clarity that you're seeking, maybe you're reading a book, or maybe you're reading, working with a particular deck. Um, sometimes it's not because you're failing miserably or that you just can't seem to memorize the damn thing. Sometimes it could just be that it's not a method that really speaks to the way you learn because we all learn differently. You know, some of, some of us are audio learners, some of us are textual learners, some of us are, are visual learners. So we all learn differently. We have different ways of processing information. So sometimes it's not because like you're not you're not getting it or like it's like insulting your IQ. Like that is not the case. We all learn very differently and you're in control of your learning. So First thing, most important thing is I want you to know that you're in control. Okay, like you get to decide how you learn. You get to decide what pace uh, that you want to learn, what kind of language that you want to learn with, what kind of uh, note-taking or study methods that you want to embark on and the things that you want to try. You get to decide, you get to like filter what information that you want to let in, right? If you don't agree with something, you don't have to force yourself to memorize it. Like it doesn't you don't need to do that. Like you just do what you want to do, what you like to do and Focus on what resonates with you, but also keep an open mind, right? You don't want to use this as, as an excuse to completely shut down and not consider other perspectives. You want to consider all the perspectives that you can't consider and then decide for yourself what really is true for you and what works for you. So number one, be open-minded, uh, but also filter in information very carefully. Like just, you know, just focus on what works for you and you remember that you are in control. So that is the first and the most important thing, I would say. Okay, so the second tip or second strategy when it comes to studying court cards or anything in general really is to ask why. So anytime you come across a definition or explanation or a piece of history, a piece of esoteric symbolism or a bunch of keywords, and especially when the keywords don't seem to come together, you want to ask why and you want to try to thread together, you want to try to filter and connect the dots. Uh, yourself in your own brain like you want to ask why you want to explain right you want to come up with like you want to try to put the logic together because if you don't do that then it's just random pieces of information that's loose but if you organize it if you filter it if you consider okay uh i think this keyword is given to the queen of wands because because of the association with the fire element then it's connected right then it's in your system then you actually learn and digested something so if you don't ask why if you don't try to put it together then it's just random loose pieces of information that doesn't make sense together that's why i think a lot of people have trouble with memorizing because it's just loose pieces of information you want to try to put these information together and remember the first tip is you get to decide what you want to let in so say you have five keywords or maybe six keywords one of them doesn't make sense ditch it you don't have to keep it like it's not mandatory that you keep it just keep the ones that really strengthen your understanding and always ask why like always ask uh create like a story like figure out the story figure out what the logic is why are these keywords being put together right you know, understand it in your own mind. So it's important to ask why and always to seek that answer and to figure out why. And to figure out why, you don't need to rely on an external source. It could just be your own understanding. It's your own logic. And you don't have to feel like, oh, what if I'm wrong? 
it's okay, you can find out later. You know, your understanding of tarot and your knowledge of tarot is always changing. But the important part, I feel, is the processing. It's the process of asking why and finding the answer to that why. So when you ask why, it's easier for you to put the uh, information together. So it, it's actually like, it's kind of like organizing pieces of loose files into the folders of your brain, right? If it's just like loose pieces of info, just loose files uh, all across your desktop, then it's kind of like, what is this? I don't get it. There's no theme. There's no common threads. It's just a bunch of random things. So you wouldn't really get it. But if you organize it, put it in the designated folders, it's like, oh, it's this. It's this keyword because it's associated with a fire element, or it's this because it's because it embodies the role of a queen. Put it in that folder. If you organize it, you ask why, you try to understand where everything's coming from and how everything comes together, it's much easier to memorize and remember everything because you would organically understand it and not just have pieces of loose, loose pieces of information floating around your brain and not making sense. So that's my second piece of advice uh, when you're trying to memorize core cards or when you're really trying to study core cards. Okay, number three, which is kind of like an extension of two. Um, tip number three when it comes to studying core cards is define the definitions or define the keywords for yourself. And I'm going to give you an actual example for this. Okay, so let's say you're reading a guidebook, right? Let's say you're reading a book on tarot or on core cards. And this is one of the books I started with when I first started tarot. So really recommend this book if you're just looking for quick like keywords and definitions. But, you know, even with keywords, sometimes it's just, you have to put them together, right? You have to ask why. So, let's say you're looking at Queen of Pentacles, right? And you're looking at the list of keywords here. And it says, div um, divinatory meanings. For Queen of Pentacles, it says, a love of nature, intense involvement with the physical world, happiness, physical security, and possibly wealth. So, when you just look at the keywords, you're just like, you understand them individually, right? They're pieces of information. But you may be thinking like, what do you mean happiness? So the sun card could mean happiness. Or the other court cards could mean happiness if they're being themselves. The full card could mean happiness. Uh, Ten of cups could mean happiness. Like, what does it mean, right? So when you look at, you know, like singular keywords like this, you want to put it in context or you want to ask why. Why is Queen of Pentacles a happy card? Why does it represent happiness? Or what kind of happiness? just to represent. So you want to define the keywords for yourself. Find your own reasonings. So I wrote down an example for you. Let's say happiness for Queen of Pentacles is really referring to contentment. And because she's, you know, according to the guidebook, it says she's really intensely involved with her physical surroundings, right? Because she's of the Pentacles too. So she's involved with things she can touch like food, money, resources, clothes, fashion, health, things like that. So when it comes to happiness, you can say that she's happy from the physical things that are in her surroundings or in her life. You know, she's happy when she's well fed, when she's healthy, when she's well taken care of, when there's enough resources to go around, when she can take care of others. So that's her kind of happiness, right? So Queen of Pentacles could represent contentment, right? She's happy because everything that she needs in a physical sense is provided for, which leads to the second keyword, physical security. That's why she feels secure, because she feels happy that she has everything that she needs, which leads to possibly wealth, because as we all know, physical resources don't just have to be about money or wealth, but when you have all the things taken care of, it could mean that you have enough resources, um, you have enough money to um, provide all the things that you need. So. Queen of Pentacles is a character like that. She's someone who is happy when all these resources are available, when she's, you know, physically safe, when she feels like, you know, I got enough food to eat, I can take care of others, I have a place to live, I'm healthy, I'm working out, right? So that's who she is as a court card. She's someone who's very physically driven, and this is her kind of happiness. So you wanted to find the keywords for yourself. If you see like a bunch of keywords, then you're, they're usually connected, right? So you, you want to look at them and really figure out, like deepen into that connection, figure out why, like how are these court cards, uh, how are these keywords linked together? And you don't have to rely on, rely on the book to explain it to you. You can just do it in your head, like just do it with your own logic, right? I did it with my own logic. I'm just like, you know, Queen of Pentacles is the earth mama. She, you know, she wants to feed you until you're dead. <laughs> she wants to take care of you, help you do laundry, help you do chores because she's oriented in the physical space, right? So 
you know, like any keywords that you have about core cards, you know, just define it for yourself, right? Define it in your own terms, use your own understanding, filter it through, put it in your own mental folder, and then everything will be fine. It'll be really easy to remember that way instead of just like, oh, this card means happiness and this card means physical security. Like, what does that mean? Like, paint a picture in your head, like really understand what these keywords are talking about. And remember, you don't have to rely on the books or other people to tell you what it means. You can relate it in your own terms. Like, you can use your own understanding to understand the, the, the keywords on the book or any definitions or pieces of history that you read from the book. Okay, so another tip I want to give you, tip number four is you, when you read books or when you go onto websites or when you read little the little white books that comes with the deck that you're working with, sometimes they will give you a bunch of definitions. And then sometimes they will give you a lot of alternative definitions that may even seem contrary to each other, right? They will say, um, say ten, um, the Knight of Pentacles means this. Alter alternatively, this could also refer to a person, blah, blah, blah. And alternatively, this could also mean an energy that is blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of like, well, which one is it? Which one am I supposed to remember? So when it comes to alternative definitions, when you're working with like just this whole page of info, how do you know which one is like the one that you need? Like, how do you know which one is which? Like, how do you know which definition you need to go for when you're actually doing readings. So what I would suggest is when it comes to court cards especially because they're characters, their court cards are characters, you want to first pin down or nail down what is the essence of their character, right? Think of them as characters or personas or personality types. What is the core essence, right? What is the essence of this personality? And once you know, like take Queen of Pentacles, for example, you know she's someone who's very driven physically, right? She's really into her physical surroundings and she's a queen, so that makes her a nurturer. She wants to nurture in physical ways, right? She wants to feed you, she wants to take care of you physically, she wants to make sure that you're healthy, and she wants to make sure that she's healthy as well, etc. So that's sort of her, the core essence of her being. So you want to get that down first. So you want to get that down first. And then you take a look at all these different alternative uh, uh, definitions or interpretations of the card. You start from that core essence, the core character, the basic character of that core card, and you think, so in this context, what, what would make the core card behave this way? So you always start from that core concept, right, that center. And then when, when it comes to the alternative uh, definitions, you just ask yourself, in what context would this court card behave this way? What would cause this court card to behave this way, right? Is, um, you know, like, is it when this court card is, like, fall is fallen into the shadow side? Or is when this court card is referring to someone that you perceive to be like this court card, etc. So, but always start with the essence. Always start with the essence of essence of the character in the core card uh, and the core core personality and then go from there and just explore the alternative definitions through the lens of that center central idea. Then it wouldn't then you wouldn't feel like there's so many definitions that you have to memorize. It's like one, two, and three and four. I must memorize all of these definitions so I can properly function in a reading. You don't have to do that, you just need to get the main character essence down, which I teach you how to do in my course, Level Up Core Cards, by the way. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion. So nail that down, get that down, and then just use that as a context to explore all the other scenarios, and it will be much easier to remember, it will be much easier to kind of organically understand, or come to an understanding of the core card. So that is my fourth tip. The fifth tip is sort of like more away from the way you think, but more centered on what the car looks like. So when you are working with different decks, you know, different decks will may portray core cards in different fashion because every artist or every deck creator may interpret a core cards a little bit differently, right? So something you can do is really engage with the car. Like how is this core card portrayed on the in this particular deck and I'm gonna give you some of the things that you can look for right you want to look for the symbolic pieces you want to look for the things that are motifs on the card like the symbols on the card like what are the little details of this court card that really give you a clue or a sense of who this court card um, is for example some of the things you can look for are color like what color 
um, is the background. Like if it's bright red, what does that communicate? If it's like a muted blue, what does that communicate? You know, color, you can look into color symbolism. This is something that you can search on Google as well. Look into like the color, how color is distributed, the overall atmosphere of the colors and what the core cards are wearing. So fashion or their, what they're wearing, uh, you know, if it's modern or classical, what does that say about their personality type or their class? Is it regal? Is it like, ta like sh um, what's the word, like tattered? Is it, is, it, is it a particular material? Like if it's velvet, what does that say about the class? If it's just like a hoodie, <laughs> I don't know. What does that say about this person, right? Like if you see someone wearing a hoodie like me, you can probably assume that they're like, a big introvert, right? So sometimes the things, the clothes that they wear would also inform you of their status and what they're like and what their character behavioral traits are like, or just, you know, it tells you about their character. So look at the colors, the things they wear, the colors of whatever they're wearing, and you know, the their accessories and stuff. And also look at the objects that they're holding and also the objects that are around them, right? So like, what are they sitting on? Are they sitting on the throne? Are they sitting on... Um, a couch like what does it say when they sit on like a yoga mat or something like what does that say about them like what are some of the assumptions you can make based on what they're wearing what they're sitting what they're holding uh based on the things that are on the cards so look for those things i look for those symbolic clues and you can also look at if usually court cards are accompanied by animals so if you you can look at what are the animals that are in the card like is there like a familiar around you know queen of wands is usually seen with a black cat is the are knights riding any animals i mean they're usually riding horses but i know in some decks they're riding different animals like in universal fantasy tarot the knight of pentacles is riding a squirrel which is just adorable and you know, like, what does it mean? Like, what does it mean to have this particular steed, right? If you're riding a squirrel, that means you're, like, tiny, but in the world of a squirrel, like, the knight is, like, really tiny, you're making strides, right? So it's just about focusing on your micro wins and focusing on each tiny step that you've taken there, leading you to the goal. So that is sort of the essence of the Nine of Pentacles in that deck. So look at the animals they're riding or the animals they're around. Look up animal totems on Google, you know, look up what these animals represent and also what these animal uh, uh, instincts are like, what they, what they, how they behave and what their temperament is like, etc. So look for animals on the card. And some of the things that you can look at are when it comes to the character and how the character is portrayed. Uh, look at the posture of the court card, you know, are they like upright? Is it you know, or do they hold themselves with confidence? Are they like shy, like the page of cubs? Are they like, you know, look at their expressions too, right? How they're portrayed as a person and as a character or sometimes an animal or a spirit, I don't know. Um, look at how they're, you know, how they hold themselves, how they carry themselves, like how they're, or at least how the artist is portraying them on the car, right? You look at their posture, right? Are they like hunched? Are they, you know, standing with authority or sitting with authority? Are they like agitated or are they reaching for something? Are their legs positioned in a particular way? What does that say about their character? Are they about to go on the move? Are they just like contemplating? Um, you know, what does that say about the character? What assumptions can you make? I like the real world. In real world, we want to avoid assumptions, right? We want to get to know the person. When it comes to the world of court cards, you get to make all the assumptions that you need to make. In fact, I think it's encouraged that you need to make all these assumptions because you're interpreting a uh, two-dimensional picture and you're trying to make them three-dimensional. So you get to do stereotype a little bit. I mean, court cards don't mind. They're character types. So they're designated character types. So you get to do some blatant stereotyping when it comes to court cards, but like not in real life. So yeah, look for all the things on the cards, look for the color, the clothes, the animals, the expressions, their postures, um, all those things. Like look at for, look for different, like look at the different parts uh, of that image and of that artwork and look at how this court card is portrayed and what you can assume about them based on all the things that you notice. So yeah, that is tip number five. And I think, um, yeah, that's it. That's and yeah, that is all the tips I want to give you in this video. And if you, if this video has helped you, helped you with the study of court cards or just with the study of tarot or whatever in general, give it a thumbs up, leave uh, some comments down below in the comment section. I totally screwed it up, didn't I? Yeah, tell me, let me know in the comment section um, if you have any questions. Also, leave it down in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them and talk to you. 
And just so you know, I am, uh, well, I do have a online course, Level Up Core Cards, a Royal Crash Course that's available, helps you, you know, get to know these stubborn royals, you know, no more awkward staring contests, no more boring memorizations, I'm not one for memorizations, even though I'm Asian. <laughs> totally not for memorizations. I'm gonna teach this to you in a fun and creative way and you get to know these court cards and you get to look at all the quirky cute doodles that I made for this course or just for for tarot in general. Super super cute and I hope you enroll because it's an amazing course. A super affordable price. It's $33 American. <gasps> Do you even need to think about that? <gasps> Time to enroll right now. So if you enroll before Sunday, February 2nd, you get a 15% off discount and you get two bonuses, which I will tell you about. One is studying tips and strategies on how to deepen your understanding into court cards on particular. And the second bonus is, this is a juicy bonus. The second bonus is how to work with non conventional court card role. So if you get a court card like the Guardian of Shells or the Phoenix of Queen, uh, the Phoenix of Wands or Fe what do you do with that? Do you just read it as the Queen of Wands or do you actually take into account of like the symbolism of the Phoenix? What do you do with those? So that's a bonus article that you get if you enroll and I hope you enroll because it's a really great course and I'll be there and I hope you join me and for more details check out this the description box and you can also check out my website if you want to learn more about the course everything's on there I'm very transparent I list all the chapters and all the perks that you're getting I don't hide anything because I I don't like hiding you know sometimes I just get so annoyed that someone's asking me to enroll in a course and then I'm just like can I have the curriculum they're just like no you must pay for it and I'm just like but I just want to know what you're teaching. They're just like, no, you must pay for it. You must not get this for free. You know, so that's why I'm always transparent. I want to let people know what they're getting, exactly what they're getting if they purchase. And then I guess like people do it because they don't, they want the element of surprise or the, this discovered value or whatever. But for me, it's transparent because there's even more value after you get the course because it's awesome. Okay, anyway, I hope these five tips and strategies with court cards slash studying helps you. Leave me down in the comments and I hope you share this video. Share it with your tarot buddy. And um, I will see you next time. And let me know if you there's any like tarot study centric video that you want me to make. Because I'm really good with figuring out studying stuff. Because I've been a tutor for the past decade. So pick my brain, pick my brain. Alright, until next time, be the hero of your own story, keep calm and tarot on, and this is Kim from Fable Stand, and I will see you in the next video. This is so cringy. Okay, bye.